to episode 42 of the Hannah on the Road podcast. I think it's 42. 42 would be awesome because 42 is the answer to everything. Um, anyways, I'm Hannah Lisa, your host for today and always and as usual. I'm coming to you from my living room in Berlin on a slightly off schedule uh, episode because it's been three weeks since we last saw each other because I took a little, little workation last week. I went with my partner David to Mallorca where he spent a week playing beach volleyball and I spent a week working from a really nice cute hotel. This is a po 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 podcast, podcast, um, po podcast, clearly I'm overexcited today. This is a podcast about making primarily and first and foremost and always knitting and I'm so so glad that you're joining us. Welcome to everyone who's new and just checking out this podcast and welcome back to all the returning viewers. It means a lot to me that you're taking, taking a little bit of time out of your day to watch me talk about all things on and off the needles. A little bit of administrati before we dive into all of the goodness that is sitting right next to me here on the sofa. If you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm hlh.designs over there and you can find my project back shop as hlh-designs.com and show notes for this episode are as usual in the down bar below. So if you're curious about anything that I'm talking about this uh, in this episode, do let me know. Um, no, not do let me know. What what am I talking about? Go to the down bar because more likely than not, there will be a link to whatever you're looking for in the down bar. Clearly, we're setting ourselves up for success here, aren't we? I also just realized that I forgot something that I wanted to show you. So bear with me for a second. I'll be right back. Alrighty, I'm back and I thought it might be good if I let you in on the little secret why I'm so ah, excited, hyperactive, Hannah Lisa, even more Hannah Lisa on steroids um, today. It's not because I've had too much coffee, it's because yesterday we opened pre-orders for Jewels, our third Making Stories publication. And um, the reception has been really, really wonderful. Um, and yeah, I mean, we still have a way to go to recoup all, like our entire project budget, but I'm just really, I'm just really happy right now. I probably jinxed it with this, but in case uh, you haven't heard about it yet. So um, my other company, Making Stories, a knitwear publishing house has just started accepting pre-orders for jewels for our third book. I will pop the link here in the description box and then also in the down bar below, just in case you want to check out the um, gorgeous cover and all of the rest of the pattern goodness. But that aside, what are we going to talk about today? I've brought a few uh, finished objects with me and my current work in progress. I want to talk a little bit about socks and then at the end of the day, at the end of the episode, I have a little bit of shop news for you. So let's talk finished objects. Uh, about uh, two weeks ago now, I got quite sick. Um, not like really bad sick, but just a really bad cold. And I spent a few days in bed and really honestly just knitting, knitting, knitting a lot. And so I have three finished objects that I want to share with you today. The first one um, is one that I um, discovered when I was cleaning out my whip basket a few weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, and I had completely forgotten that I had one entire vanilla sock off the needles. And um, yeah, so one of the first things that I did when I got sick was casting on the second vanilla sock and that I think was done within two days of Netflixing in bed. So this is probably the most boring FO of all times that I could show you, but for the sake of completion, um, this is one of the newest FOs that I have, a pair of plain vanilla socks knit in cuckoo yarns. Um, this is unfortunately a super wash yarn, I think, um, but I love the speckles and I love the blue and you know me. Me and Kimana, I'm wearing like almost every day blue or black. 
but so I really like them. Um, a few details if you haven't watched an episode where I'm talking about my vanilla socks. I'm a die-hard toe-up sock fan um, and I will cast on 16 stitches and then increase in the toe to 56 stitches and then I will always do a heel flap and gusset heel usually with a reinforced slip stitch heel so that's also what I've done here and then just knit however long I want the leg to be um, and then end with in this case uh, like I don't even know if you say half twisted rib no probably not but I just twisted the right stitches and not the uh, the knit stitches and not the purl stitches bind off using Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off all of this is knit on two millimeter needles and two millimeter needles with 56 stitches gives me the perfect vanilla sock I love wearing this size I am using um, Adi mini circulars for my vanilla socks because that just makes it so much faster. Um, the only exception to that is the toe where depending on how fiddly the yarn is, I might cast on, on a pair of my chow goose and then transfer the stitches to the Adi mini circs. So yeah, that's all that you need to know about my vanilla socks. Um, and I can't wait to get these off the sock blockers and onto my feet because it's fall, you guys. It's beautiful outside and I'm so excited because finally we get to wear all the woolens and it's my one of my favorite times of the year so this girl is very happy about that. The next thing that jumped on my needles was a hat that I've been meaning to cast on for a while in I think it must have been June we published a collection of um, patterns called travel through making stories it's a beautiful ebook designed and written by Verena and she collected travel um, patterns so patterns for things that you will want to wear while you're traveling or also patterns that you will want to knit while you're traveling and there's a gorgeous gorgeous hat in that collection it's called Glendaloo and I'm probably butchering the name I have no idea how to pronounce it um, I had bookmarked that for a specific skein that I picked up at Verb for Keeping and a Verb for Keeping Warm when I was in Oakland in spring. I got my hands on a skein of Stone Wool Cormo, a yarn that I'd been wanting to try for the longest time. And as soon as I saw the Glendalo head, I knew that it needed to become one of those. So that's the second thing that I can show you today. This is the hat. And I'm not entirely sure how well it's going to show up on camera because it's a very dark green. I actually lost the label, so honestly I don't know how this colorway is called, but it's gorgeous. It's a dark green with blue undertones, um, almost a little bit tealy in some of the light that we get here. And it's really, really, it's really good. It's just a really nice, it's a really nice color. Um, you might have seen this in my last episode where I probably made the biggest fool out of myself when I was like, so this Cormo is like, it's really interesting because it's a lot softer than I expected. It's almost like Merino. And then about five minutes after I published the podcast episode, Marina, my wonderful tech editor, commented under it and was like, um, Cormo is actually a crossbreed between Corydale and Merino. Hence, it's called Cormo. I'm like, Makes a lot of sense. Learn something new. So, Cormo, for everyone who also didn't know this, is a mixture of, um, well, the sheep is a crossbred sheep of Corydale and Merino. So the yarn is actually really, really soft. And the stone wool has an interesting, it's, it's I don't know if it's a two ply or a three ply and worst it weight. So it has an interesting feel to it when you're knitting with it. At the beginning I wasn't so sure about it, but then um, I, I got used to it and it was fine at the end. I love the pattern, it's a lot of different cables, um, but they are quite intuitive. So um, once you get the hang of it, you can knit it without the pattern if like that's, um, that's what I did. Um, 
I modified the hat slightly. It usually inc includes a folded brim, but I was pretty sure that I was going to be playing yarn chicken anyways, and I didn't want to swatch. Um, and that was a problem, and you'll see why in a second. So I just decided that I was going to knit half of the rib uh, for the brim, and that was fine too. I can't really remember which size needles I knit this on. I wanna say four and a half millimeters and five and a half millimeters or four and a half and five. Um, something pretty large, um, which was a nice change of pace after the socks. Um, so yeah, overall I enjoyed knitting on this. It's not the most intuitive cable thing that I've ever knit, but definitely fun to knit. And fortunately, this not swatching thing hasn't worked out so well for me. Cause I look like a little smurf. So yeah, um, <laughs> when I wear it like this, and I think it's supposed to be a lot shorter than it actually is, um, it looks kind of dumb, honestly. So um, I've been trying to sort of like pull it down like this, but uh, it doesn't really sit super well in my head. It does sit super well on David's head though, and it looks really cool slouchy on, on his head, so um, I think I'm just gonna give this to him because I'm not gonna be happy with this. Um, so uh, yeah, still I loved knitting, like I always love exploring the, like exploring new to me yarns. I wanted to knit with Stonewall for a long, long time. I wanted to knit this pattern for a long, long time, so I'm not mad at that the finished object didn't turn out exactly how I wanted it and um, I had it coming right like I didn't swatch the I should have known better so um, Smurfy gotta do what you gotta do right um, anyways uh, <laughs> I would still honestly highly recommend the pattern Glendalo by Verena Kors from Travel our one of our making stories collections and uh, maybe I'll, I can convince David to take a few photos of him wearing it because it actually looks good on him. That was my second finished object. And then my third finished object is another hat. And it's another one that I've been wanting to knit for quite a while. And I knew which yarn I wanted to have. And when I got sick and I was like, meh, I don't really have anything on my needles. Let's cast something on. Um, I cast on the Brecken Beanie by Jennifer Garrett and this um, uh, pattern has been out for a year I think um, or so and a few months ago I bought some yarn that I thought would fit it really really well and that was Mendip by Marina Skua, um, a local UK yarn and um, hand dyed by her in the colorway Storm. And do, 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 I proudly present my Brecken Beanie. Now, this one, I like. This one sits exactly how I wanted it to fit. Um, and I didn't swatch. <laughs> I just, um, well, I took a wild guess. Now, I didn't take a wild guess, but a few things about this pattern yarn combination. So the pattern, the original pattern is written for a DK weight yarn. Now this yarn is technically a four ply slash fingering weight. You can maybe also classify it as a sport weight. Um, and I was like, well, um, this is really woolly. So it's probably going to fluff up during blocking. The hat uh, pattern comes with two sizes. If I knit it, I know that I wanna have a little like a loose hat. This is like, a, this is a really dense fabric and I love looser hats for the temperatures that we have for most of the year, like for fall and for spring, because I don't really like my head to get super warm. And so I wanted to have a little bit of a lighter fabric. So I decided that I was going to cast on with the original needle size and the larger size of the two of the pattern with this fingering slash sport weight yarn and it worked perfectly. It fits like a charm. So sometimes, you know, like sometimes guesswork goes wrong, sometimes it works out fine. That's why I love knitting. And you learn things, right? Like I was pretty confident that this was going to work out fine. Um, 
So the pattern itself, again, one of those really nice cable patterns. I really enjoyed it. Um, I think it looks beautiful in the yarn. The only modification that I did is that I omitted one of the cable repeats to, um, sorry, like before the crown decreases, because I took a look at my favorite hat of all times and laid it against this one when I was done with three cable repeats. And I realized that it was already time for the crown decreases. So, yay! Maybe I just have a weird row gauge whenever I'm knitting hats because that's obviously the issue with this one, right? That, like, it's way too long. Who knows? I don't know. Anyways. Um, I love this hat. I love this color. I love the yarn. I love supporting both Jennifer and Marina through knitting this in this yarn. Um, David hates the hat. David hates the color. It was so funny. We were out uh, earlier this week. Um, I think on the weekend we were out to to take a few FO photos of all of the things that I finished lately. And he really didn't want to photograph this. He was like, this is so ugly. I hate the color. And I'm like, I love the color. I want to have a sweater in the color. So there you go. Um, I'm still going to wear the heck out of the head. First and foremost, I'm not going to let any man dictate what I'm wearing or not. And second of all, I just love it. So there's that. Yeah, long story short, um, my Brecken beanie patterned by Jennifer Garrett knit and mended by Marina Skua, um, who, by the way, has a cow running for Mendip, and I think it's still running for a month or so. And you can probably find information about that in her Instagram profile, and I link to that in the down bar below. So in case you want to get your hands on some of this um, and knit something in it, uh, perfect. By the way, this hat used less than 50 grams of yarn. What? Yeah, I don't know. I couldn't believe it either. But I had two 50 gram skeins, and I was I was so sure that I was going to at least break into the second one. And I have like a little ball of yarn and like from the first one left. So I could make a little pom-pom. Pom-pom? No pom-pom? Let me know in the comments below if you think I should add a pom-pom here. Okay, those are my three finished objects that I wanted to share with you today. And the work in progress that I have brought with me is another one that I cast on um, two weeks ago when I was sick in bed, living in my Shuri project bag. Um, and the story behind this work in progress is that last year in November, I was at Nottingham Yarn Expo together with Verena. We were exhibiting um, for the first time ever as Making Stories. And our one of our wonderful booth neighbors was the lovely Paula from Moleview Yarn. And I picked up three skeins of her Bliss Base, which is a 50% merino, non-superwash, and 50% um, mulberry silk base. It's a single ply, and I picked it, picked it up in the colorway 5, which is this gorgeous natural color with deep dark red speckles. Um, and I've been wanting that colorway for the longest time. And when I saw Paula's booth, I realized that he, she had actually gotten a sample knit out of exactly that colorway on exactly that base. And that sample was the Arwen sweater by Isabel Crema. It's a pattern that got really popular. It has sort of like a lacy yoke with a little bit of bobbles uh, here. And um, it's a really beautiful sweater. And I was really intrigued because I wasn't really sure what I wanted to, like what I would want to make with, um, with that yarn. And so I was like, ooh, I could make this. So fast forward to my time in San Francisco, I'd actually taken the yarn with me and I had this intention of designing this beautiful sweater out of it and then I cast it on and I knit and I knit and again when I was tidying up my work in progress basket a few weeks ago, I pulled that out and I was like, let's face it, designing is just not my priority right now. If inspiration strikes and I really feel like writing up another design, great, but I'm all about simplifying and focusing on the essentials right now, and the essentials are making stories and HLH designs, and not knitwear and designing. And there are so many beautiful patterns out there from people who I want to support. 
So I gave myself permission to rip it out and not continue with that design. Um, so I had three skeins of that beautiful, beautiful yarn sitting in my stash. And when I was sick in bed and I wanted a new cast on, I took a look at all of Isabel Crema's patterns because I knew that I wanted to knit something from her patterns. And I stumbled across a pretty recently published sweater called the Yuma sweater which is a very simple top-down like top-down yoked sweater that comes with different arm lengths and a very simple lacy yoke just a bit of geometric lace I was like that's it that's what I want to make out of that yarn so I did or I am doing it because I'm not I'm not done yet but I've made quite a lot of progress. So, this is it, you guys. This is my human sweater. Yay! Okay, so um, as you can see here, um, I mean, it's not blocked yet, right? But like, you can sort of see the, you can sort of see the lace. Um, in the yoke and then it's just pure stuck in it, stuck in it, stuck in it until the bottom where I'll insert a twisted rib and this like it also stays like that so the neckline there won't be a picked up neckline or anything um, which I wasn't too sure about but I really like the look when I wear it so yeah I really like it. I know it's risky knitting a sweater in a single ply yarn because it's gonna pull like crazy and who knows maybe it's only gonna look great when the first time that I wear it but I love it and um, it's the softest thing ever 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 and it's so light. Ah it's gorgeous. A few details. I'm knitting this on 3.75 millimeters um, in the in like on my chow goose, and I'm knitting it I think in the size M1 or something something. Um, and I didn't swatch. <laughs> what is it about me and not swatching? But I didn't swatch because I was really scared that I wasn't going to have enough yarn. Um, and I honestly like. Those are my first two skeins. What the heck is going on with this? Maybe this is going to be like a 200 gram sweater. Um, I also picked the pattern because I knew it was really going to be super easy to modify the sleeves like from full length to quarter length for example if I didn't have enough yarn but at this rate I'm very sure that I can make this a full, full like a sleeve, full sleeve length uh, sweater however you call that. Um, what else is there to say? I'm alternating skeins every other row on the back um, because the speckles are really like one of them has a lot of speckles and the other one doesn't have a lot of speckles so I think this works really beautifully um, and otherwise it would have been more of a faded look and I didn't want that. Yeah that's all that is there to say about Yumi. Um, I love it, um, it's really like, it's great to carry around, it's great to knit while watching Netflix, it's great for everything and it's gonna be great in my wardrobe. So, I sound like Donald Trump, right? Everything's great. Let's not talk about Donald Trump. Let's not talk about Brad Kavanaugh. Let's not get into politics because otherwise I'm gonna get very, very mad. Okay, um, let me take a look at my timer and not that we're running out of storage space here. Okay, we still have a little bit of time. Um, so uh, a little bit of behind the scenes of the podcast. My camera automatically switches off after 29 minutes of recording video. So I always set myself a timer on my phone for 29 minutes because it's happened more than once that I recorded 45 minutes and it stopped saving after 29 minutes and we don't want that do we? Okay, uh, onwards from behind the scenes of the podcast to a few things that are happening on HLH Designs territory in October that I wanted to share with you. The first one is that it's Socktober! Yay! Okay, so you know how much I love knitting socks and Socktober is the month where all of us knitters celebrate the hand knit sock and cast it on and there's tons of celebrations around it. And I was so excited because this year is actually the first year that I can 
celebrate with self-published designs and that I can offer something to you guys during those celebrations. So here's what I'm offering. I'm offering a bundle of my three sock patterns. Um, those are the three patterns. My memory lane socks, my soft and strong socks, and my, oops, this way you can see them better, and my Corpio socks. And for the entire month of October, if you buy all three sock patterns, you get one of them for free. So it's three for the price of two. And all you need to do in order to activate that discount is go to Ravelry, pop all three in your cart and check out. That's it, nothing else. Um, so yay, I'm really, really happy about that. I hope you're going to take advantage of that offer. And I hope you get a lot and lots of socks during Socktober. The second thing that's happening is that we're gonna have a shop update this week, Friday, which is, wait, today is the 9th, today is Tuesday, which is October 12th. Um, I have a poll running on Instagram, whether it's going to be on at 7 p.m. CEST or at 9 p.m. Last time, lots of people voted for 9 p.m. and I'm curious what's going to happen this time. And we're gonna have a, like a smaller shop update this time, so I'll have, three colors restocked in the shop. We'll have more Skafta felt, both in small and in medium. We'll have more Glimmer, mainly in medium, and we'll have more Kierkebein Klaustur, um, the lovely dark green velvet. I'm really sorry that there aren't more large bags in the shop. They are, like, the fall collection has been so popular, I was blown away by it. Um, and we're working our asses off to get more large bags produced, but currently I just don't have any in stock. There are, however, still a few large bags, for example, of Shuri, which I think would work really well if you wanted to have a combination um, with Glumur, um, or any of the others for that matter. And I've rearranged the web shop so that you can see at a glance what is not sold out. Because what was bugging me for the longest time is that it always looked as if everything was sold out. And I think that makes for a shitty shopping experience. And I want to provide you guys with a good shopping experience. So I've already tweaked quite a few smaller things on the web shop in the last week. And I have a list of other things that I want to adjust. Um, and I just hope that it gets better and better the longer that we're doing this. So shop update um, on Friday. If you want to head over to the shop now, there are still a few smaller things in, in stock. Um, so by all means, go do that. That is everything that I have for you today. And I think we're just under 30 minutes, which is just how I like it. I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying the first fall days. I hope you have lots of socks on your needles and if you don't again let me remind you sock bundle three for two and oh do let me know pom-pom or no pom-pom in the comments down below alrighty i'll see you again here in two weeks take care of yourself Bye bye